Richard from EnvisionSelfHealing.com and in this blog I'm going to be talking about motivation and it's uh, kind of a personal blog at this point because uh, I'm talking about my own motivation to do my vision improvement exercise program and in the last week uh, my motivation has sort of changed. Um, I was working on my presbyopia and it was getting better um, but I found that a little, uh, shall we say, lacking in motivation. It's great to be able to read more easily, uh, read my credit card receipts, my iPhone a little more easily, uh, and that's great, but I realized I was sort of passing up on the major motivation in my life for doing vision improvement, which is uh, improving my optic atrophy. and. Um, and so I, that's why I switched in my previous blog to doing an optic atrophy exercise, which is an exercise for stimulating the blind spots in, my, in my, both of my eyes, but, but in particular in my left eye, uh, in dealing with this, what's called a scotoma, or this lack of, this oval lack of vision, oval-shaped lack of vision in my left eye. And the reason I'm changing my eyes is like, okay, what, what's really going to motivate me to do a vision improvement program? And uh, basically I realized the driving really is the driving force. Being able to drive is the driving force behind me uh, doing a vision, impro vision improvement program right now. So that was the, 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 mo the new motivation I came up with and the, and the instigation to change my program to include this stimulation of the blind spot in my left eye. Uh, I'm gonna start doing more shifting with eye charts, which is another thing, so I'm gonna be using, uh, it's sort of using the macula, but it's also using the brain and the optic nerve to start focusing in on letters on an eye chart. It's sort of like the heavy lifting of vision improvement, of, of really trying to improve using an eye chart, which is, for a lot of people is a little intimidating because we're all, uh, those of us with vision problems grew up hating the eye chart because we were so bad at it. So I'm going to be starting to do that and then I'm going to continue with my sunning and palming and um, I'm going to shift the presbyopia a little bit into the background. Um, anyway, that was my motivation as of uh, starting about a week ago. My shift in motivation towards this. I want to drive thing. The interesting thing that happened is I posted my blog on YouTube last week. There I am. Turn myself off. Um, the other motivation that appeared sort of by accident is I looked over in what YouTube had given me as uh, related videos, as they say. And of course, a lot of them are Will and I's uh, blogs and uh, podcasts are here at the top. And then uh, I start going down and I find uh, stem cell treatments in China and in India, actually. And um, I'm thinking, hmm, I actually had a client maybe four months ago who went to China and had stem cell research with a form of optic atrophy, not the form I have. And I kind of blew it off. I was like, well, that's probably, f he, he got optic atrophy later in life can't even remember exactly what the cause was. Um, and I kind of blew it off and said, yeah, yeah, this probably doesn't apply to me. And would I really do that anyway? And, uh, and then when I put my, my video on YouTube and saw all of these videos on the side here about optic atrophy, I thought, well, maybe I really should look at them. <laughs> this is the first one I looked at. Let me just show you. It's pretty classic. Not very inspiring. Made in India. Not motivating me to go to India to get stem cell research. Oh, come on. This is so ridiculous. Okay, this is the entire video of him staring at the camera for the first half, which is the before picture. Then he stares at the camera more. And this is the after picture. And his eyes are a little more active. That's for sure. And maybe really something happened. Not a great video. Doesn't make me want to go to India. But then, I looked at this guy, Adam Kitchener, I think his name is. This is China. 
way higher production values. Sports. His wife sports, talks, sports, he sports, talks, sports, yeah, yeah. talks about his kids. And he has exactly what I have. Optic nerve atrophy from birth. And so it definitely tickled something in me. And so now I'm like, hmm, I'm, I'm faced with the sort of the, the modern paradigm choice of medical model versus self-healing model. And, and even as I do that, I realize I'm creating this polarity between the two that I don't have to do. I don't have to create that polarity. That, you know, these kinds of things are available um, and I can use the self-healing model at the same time. And one of the things I remember about this client was that he went to China, had the stem cell treatment, immediately thereafter, and this Adam Kitchener and I says something similar, immediate, immediately improvement in, in his vision, like the next day. But this, this client also saw a drop-off after he left China. So um, it makes me wonder if there's something about the environment to which those stem cells are being introduced uh, that could affect the effectiveness of the treatment. That maybe if you create a good environment for the stem cells to implant themselves, uh, you have a better chance of that improvement continuing. There's all sorts of possibilities. But it's an interesting you know, there's part of me that goes, oh, let's, you know, we don't, we can just go the medical model route. Like, I can make it into a black and white situation. Um, but then there's the, the part of me that's experienced the self-healing model and the, how it's improved my vision from, you know, 2300 to almost 2000. And I don't want to give up on that model either. And so, ironically, this is sort of becoming a motivation for me to, uh, push forward more with the self-healing model um, because there's the risk of this stuff. I mean, he's going to China. Um, for this guy, he saw worse than me, maybe 2,400. And now he's, it sounds, seems like he's he, in China, his vision got below 2,200. And I, I'm really happy for him. Whether it maintained, I'm going to have to try and uh, find this guy and see if I can talk to him. I can talk to the client that I have. Uh, that I saw maybe four months ago, talk to him some more. So I'm going to be going through this research exploration of this possibility. And yet, it is a risk. It's like you're introducing this foreign, well, it's not really foreign, I guess it's a human cell into your system. Uh, but what are the risks of that? The, the, one of the reasons people have to go to China is because China doesn't have the medical I want to call it morality, but the ethics of we're going to make sure things really, really work before we try them on humans. Um, and I think in, in this country, in the United States, we take it maybe too far sometimes, although there have been many examples where it really didn't go far enough um, in pharmaceuticals and things like that. So it's an interesting phenomenon that I posted my video on YouTube and this is what hit me. And I guess we're all dealing with this, with these kinds of things. Um, ironically, I got uh, refused from, for, uh, for trans, well, I moved from Washington State to California and I wanted to get health insurance here. And I simply put on the form that I have optic atrophy, not really thinking about it too much. Got refused by, I think it was Blue Cross. Um, and I thought, why? It's like my eyes don't cost anything. You know, the, the optic atrophy can't be fixed uh, by medical technology. So why are they refusing me? Now I guess I know why. I mean, this guy paid, sounds like about $40,000 for this treatment. So maybe that's why Blue Cross, maybe Blue Cross had a point that someone with my condition, they are worried about special treatments, uh, very expensive treatments. So at least that makes me feel better about being re rejected at that point. Um, so I'm going to try and treat this as now as motivation, another motivation. I have my shiny new car that I want to drive. That's, a, that's one of those carrots. Maybe that's the carrot in front of me. It's like I want that shiny new car. I want to be able to drive to uh, 
mainly to, to go do recreational things. Um, it would just help my life out to be able to drive. I'm very comfortable on public transportation, but there are limitations to it. So maybe that's the carrot. And maybe I'm going to now treat this as a stick because I actually don't want to get this treatment. I would rather have my eyes heal in the self-healing model. And I don't want to take the risk of introducing stem cells into my, into my body. I mean, they're just cells, but aren't, you know, cancer cells are cells too. So there are um, realities that we don't know what this is going to do. Um, the stem cell thing, I believe these are adult. I, 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 that's, that's not a controversy I care about, but I actually don't think this has anything to do with uh, fetuses or embryos anyway. So that's not really an issue. Um, but I suppose if, if, I, if, I, if I push now and I don't get as far as I want to go, I would consider this. Um, but for me, I would rather take the time, see if the self-healing model could get me far enough that I feel comfortable with where I'm at, which for me would be the ability to drive without uh, serious risk. Um, I would feel comfortable not doing something like this. So maybe this is becoming, well, there are spinal injections involved and I've never done anything like that. I've, I've been very lucky health-wise in the rest of my life. I've never had surgery. I've never, I mean, I've had stitches as a kid and that's about it. I've never spent any time in a hospital. Spinal injections do not thrill me. I know it's probably no big deal. And undoubtedly the Chinese know how to give all of these treatments safely. Um, I do wonder about their willingness to try this on human subjects without knowing long-term consequences. Um, I am old enough that if I were to wait for the United States to perfect this, I might be in my 70s for all I know. And at that point, would I really care? Whereas right now, it could impact my life very positively. So anyway, I just thought I would share this sort of crossroads that I hit. Uh, and right now I'm going to spend some time uh, researching, looking at these videos. I really only looked at this one video, and well, the Indian video, which please don't look at it. It's, it's incredibly depressing. I'm going to spend some time right now looking at these videos, and maybe I'll report back. So stay tuned. Well, I have to say that was pretty interesting. Um, does seem like it's helping a lot of people. Uh, it doesn't dissuade me from doing uh, eye exercises and creating a healthy, healthy visual system as healthy as possible. If I were to get this treatment, uh, I would want to have those cells be implanted in a very healthy, non-stressed system uh, of a relaxed visual system uh, with as much blood flow coming to that area as possible. Um, and, you know, when you have uh, conditions like optic atrophy or any other visual condition, you, it creates strain in other parts of, in, of your body and your face. And your, it, it, it's a spiral down from the original uh, condition, adding on uh, stress and strain on top of it. So. I'd like to remove all of that if I were to get this treatment. So anyway, stay tuned. Uh, it's, it involves 40 days in, in China, which doesn't appeal that much to me either. Um, the spinals obviously don't appeal to me that much, but uh, I'm open to combining potentially this treatment with uh, self-healing. So I guess there is the possibility that self-healing could be leading to nerve growth itself, and maybe that's why my nerve has gotten better, my vision's gotten better over the years. It's, that's another question. Uh, and I'm sure that most of these other patients have not practiced that kind of thing. So uh, it's a very interesting question, and stay tuned. Uh, this has just been an unusual blog for me to, to be looking into this. So uh, uh, thanks for watching, and see for yourself.